Last year, the Supreme Court allowed Texas' six-week ban on abortion to go into effect, and this year, relatively soon actually, we might see them overturn Roe v. Wade entirely. Now, conservatives who want to ban abortion are probably looking at the preliminary data out of Texas, and they're saying, look... Numbers don't lie. Abortions went down after Texas passed their de facto ban. Therefore, we are justified in doing this. We think that abortion should be banned and banning abortion leads to less abortions because the rate of abortion significantly decreased in Texas after this law went into effect. Except, as many of us had argued, you're not going to ban abortions out of existence. You're just going to change the way that women have abortions. Rather than getting safe abortions in their state they're just gonna pursue potentially unsafe illegal abortions or go to a different state and two studies are confirming that we were all correct that women in texas very much are still getting abortions lily sten of rogue rocket explains initial studies found that abortions in texas fell by 50 percent in the months after the state's ban took effect however the new data from two groups of researchers at the university of texas at austin found that abortions actually dropped at a much lower rate about 10 percent when accounting for texans who went to a clinic out of state or ordered abortion pills online according to one of the studies for each month between september of 2021 when the law took effect and the end of the year, an average of 1,400 Texans sought abortions in one of seven nearby states. That is 12 times the number of people who got out-of-state abortions before the law was put in place. During the same period, an average of 1,100 Texans each month ordered abortion pills online from the overseas service Aid Access. The nonprofit organization connects people seeking abortions with European doctors and Indian pharmacies, which are able to skirt abortion restrictions and send the pills by mail. The number of individuals who sought other means of abortions is likely higher than indicated in the studies because the data only accounts for those who visited 34 of 44 clinics in the seven neighboring states and includes those who may have gone to additional states or crossed the border to Mexico. The research also does not include those who used other methods to get abortions like ordering pills from online pharmacies that have not yet published their sales numbers. This proves that you can't ban abortions out of existence. You can make laws making it more difficult for women to get abortions, but they're still going to get abortions. It'll just change where and how they get abortions. Republicans know this, but what they're doing is throwing red meat to their base. They actually think that banning abortion is going to lead to no abortions, but that's just unrealistic. It's the drug law, but for women's rights, you know, banning drugs isn't going to do anything to actually reduce drug use. It's just going to create this black market for drugs. And we're going to see a similar effect with respect to abortion. I don't know if there's going to be abortion black markets popping up as a result of this, where doctors perform illegal abortions, but certainly we can expect a lot of women to cross state lines to get abortions because there will be states, even if Roe v. Wade is overturned, that do not overturn abortion. The West Coast, California, Oregon, Washington, the East Coast, these states will very much much still keep abortion legal. So women might just go to these states to get abortions, and lawmakers in Republican-controlled states are anticipating this, and they're trying to respond to this. So as reporter Kate Smith tweets, a new Missouri bill would prohibit women leaving the state to get an abortion. If this style of legislation is somehow found legal, it would have a huge impact in a post-Roe v. Wade world. In Texas, where Roe might as well not exist, half of the state's abortion patients cross state lines or request abortion pills from Aid Access, an overseas service that sends pills in the mail while sidestepping U.S. abortion laws. And yes, this is obviously unconstitutional, but so is a six-week abortion ban for now. Ask a Texas abortion patient how those constitutional rights are working out. So banning women from crossing state lines to get abortions is obviously unconstitutional, but let's say some of these states in a post real world passed uh, these laws and they at least temporarily restricted women from going to a different state to get an abortion. What would be the effect? Well, again, I think we can predict that they're still going to get abortions. They just won't get a safe abortion in a state where it's legal. They will resort to potentially unsafe and illegal abortions in state or order pills from abroad. So the takeaway here is that you're not going to ban abortion out of existence. You are just going to endanger the lives of women who seek out abortions, who can no longer get safe abortions in their home states. And if you are one of these so-called pro-life individuals, then maybe stop being a fucking clown and focus 
on the issues where life is threatened. Anthropogenic climate change threatens the habitability of this planet. The human species is in danger. Maybe if you're pro-life, you'd focus on that. Maybe all of the military spending that we inject into the military-industrial complex to wage never-ending wars, maybe that should be your priority. How our country aligns with human rights abusers like Saudi Arabia, who's doing a genocide in Yemen currently. How our tax dollars funds apartheid states like Israel. I mean, if you're pro-life, there's so many things that you can do. Just admit, if you're anti-abortion, you just want to control women. That's what this is about. Because if you're pro-life, there are so many other causes that would actually help save lives that you could be focusing on, but you focus on abortion. Banning it isn't going to get rid of abortions, but yet you still continue to do this. I feel like most people have got to know this, right? So what is this really about? If you're not pro-life in actuality, what is this about? Well, you just want to control women. This is misogyny. This is your end game. This has always been the case. Supposed pro-life people don't give a flying fuck about life. If they did, they would stop doing things that are harmful to human beings. Stop pushing for laws that lead to LGBTQ plus deaths. Opt for basic gun control that would stop mass death events in this country from occurring on a daily fucking basis. Support a single-payer healthcare system so thousands of Americans don't die every single year because they don't have basic access to healthcare. But no, they focus on abortion. Why? Because they just want to control women. That's what this is about. I mean, abortion is a procedure that needs to be done by somebody who's an expert. It can't be done in a back alley by some makeshift abortion doctor who uses a coat hanger. That is what is going to threaten the lives of women. That is what is going to lead to deaths. But yet these dipshits call themselves pro-life as they restrict women's access to health care. It's not pro-life. It's about controlling women. And I wish that all of these pro-life frauds would just admit that. Just admit what you're all about. You want to control women. And that's your agenda. Period. You're not pro-life. This is a pro-death position. Banning abortion is quite literally a pro-death position. And when we start getting reports, if Roe v. Wade is in fact overturned, that uh, women are dying because they're getting unsafe abortions, that blood is on your hands. This is on you. So own it. Own the consequences of your actions.